All right, hello everybody and welcome to this live stream episode here on the Insect Hunter. In today's episode, I am going to be doing something that I'm a little bit nervous about. We have here today with us Natasha, the Black Widow Spider. I'm going to be talking to you about her and showing her off to you guys. I'm a little bit scared, but let's go ahead and let's jump right into uh, doing this. Let's get it over with, right? All right. Well, I'll just give you guys a quick little overview of what we'll be doing. I am going to start handling her real quickly here in just a few moments. Hopefully the audio is working good. Special thanks to um, to Brian and to Karen for helping us out. That should be good. All right. So just as a quick overview of what I'll be doing today with you guys, um, I'm going to be showing off Natasha, this black widow spider, to you guys. I'll be showing her off. She just ate, so I think she's going to be all right. Um, I'll also be talking about the life cycle of black widow spiders. Um, I'll be talking about the habitat they live in, um, their toxicity, what it is that makes them bite, and then what kind of medical treatment uh, that you'll need to do. So hopefully I don't have to do that myself, but uh, we'll find out here really soon, right? Before I get into any of this, guys, I want to tell you guys, do not try this at home. What I'm about to do of handling this spider, I'm going to be at the mercy of the spider. I am a trained professional. I've been researching this and preparing myself for this. Um, I'll, I'll do a, a few final uh, little bit of meditation just before I hold her to make sure that I am calm, to make sure that she is not going to overreact to uh, being handled by me. But do not try this at home. And I'll talk about the toxicity of um, this type of arachnid here with you guys as well as we get into uh, this program. And I have to tell you guys also, this is the first time I have intentionally held her. Um, and it will be the last time. I do not plan on um, holding her anymore because uh, I'm just, I can just tell that I've got a lot of adrenaline pumping through me. So I'm a little bit nervous and scared about this. But like I said to you guys before, the purpose of this is to educate people that spiders are not just evil. They're not out there to, to get us as humans. They, um, they, they are not um, as aggressive as people think they are. So we're going to find that out here together. So I'm going to see if I can show you. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if we switch over to this other camera and see if you guys can see potentially. I want to see if you guys can see here the hourglass. I'm going to move that microphone for just a minute here. If you look carefully, you might be able to see that red hourglass. I want to make sure you guys see that first so you guys know that this is actually a Black Widow spider. I don't know if I'm going to be able to convince her to... Um, look at the camera properly to show you guys, but I'm going to do my best. So we'll see what we can do. But there she is. She's inside of there. I just wanted to show you guys that hourglass. I may have to, let's see if we put it this way. You might be able to see the hourglass better like this. I think we're going to have to just, uh, just get her out in order to be able to try to show you guys that. So um, I've got her here in this little baby jar. And just before... I do this, I'm going to do a couple seconds of just uh, heavy breathing to prepare myself because the way that I act, if I'm very nervous and shaky and uh, fidgety and all sorts of things like that, which I probably will be, I want to mitigate that as much as possible so that it, it lessens my chances of getting bitten. So that's what I'm really hoping for. So give me just a second. So the purpose of this video is not to get bitten. I don't want to get bitten. I just want to show you guys. So I'm going to coax her out at kind of her own pace. I'm not going to rush her. Um, this is all just going to be very calm and very, very gentle of her coming out. So it looks like she's kind of feeling around right now. She wants to get out of here. It seems like she's very attracted to going up. That seems to be her go-to um, direction of what she likes to do. She likes to move up and get away from potential predators on the ground. So this might take a minute to kind of coax her out. So let's see if we can at least just get her on this stick, then I'll let her kind of walk onto me. So 
she's kind of got a little web in here. And I'll tell you guys, I have a bet. I have a bigger cage for her normally, but I've just put her in here, um, which I'll show you guys here in a minute. So, see, she's kind of strapped on with that web. She do doesn't want to, you know, get disconnected from her web. She's like, hey, I do not want to get disconnected from my original web, but she's going to have to in order to help us out with this. So. Try to get her on the stick and get her a little bit calmed down and just help her understand that, yes, she's going to lose her web, but that is okay. Here we go. She has just barely started walking onto my hand. So let's go ahead and switch over to the other camera if we can here. Lighting is not perfect, but there she is. She's kind of walking. Let's see if we can get her. She's just all over the place. I mean, seriously. She's very fast. She's laying webs all over the place. I mean, she's just trying to make sure that she's not going to get moved too much. She wants to really um, keep herself in line. So let's see if we can get the camera to focus here. I think with that, it'll be a little bit better. There we go. Now you can probably see her a little bit better as she moves on to my hand. She really likes to keep that web. She wants to always keep herself held up. I think we're just going to switch back to our other camera. That camera over there is just not doing it. But she keeps laying a web basically on everything. She's trying to keep herself secured. She, she wants to kind of lay out the land of what she's got here. And she's trying to hold on to that, uh, that stick. And she's just laying webs on everything. So she's now going to be laying webs basically all over my fingers. So I'll see if I can readjust the camera here in a minute, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue. I'll kind of explain some things with you guys and try to share with you guys um, as much information as I can. So, all right. So the way that you identify black widow spiders, they're a black spider. They're quite shiny. Um, as you can see, she is. Um, they're not particularly... Um, hairy they're just a they're just a very shiny black spider I'll try and see if i can get this on the other camera so you guys can see her a little bit closer here right now she is trying to drop off so i'm going to try and keep her under control i wish i had someone here helping operate the camera but i've got to exercise social distancing right guys just keeps laying this web and it is strong. It is a strong web right here. She wants to come onto my tablet and see the information we got. Now she's moving. Oh, just got on my shorts. <laughs> She'll start running all over my legs if I'm not careful here. She is not like this. We're gonna put her in the jar for just a second. We're gonna readjust the camera. All right, I'm gonna keep an eye on her for just a second. Let's see if we can readjust this camera to get a better shot here. Okay, she hasn't gotten out of that jar quite yet. Sorry about that loud sound. But anyways, they have a very shiny black body, and then they have that red hourglass shape. And I'm going to try and get her to come out of here, and I'll show you guys with like an SD card, kind of the um, about the size. So this is her with the SD card next to her. You can see. I'll even let her come onto the SD card. This will show you about what their size is. They're about 5 to 13 millimeters. She doesn't really want to cooperate. She wants to come onto the wrong side of the SD card. Hopefully you guys can see her. You guys can't see these webs, but she has this web. She's tied onto this uh, glass can. She's always laying webs to kind of secure herself in case of wind or, or other things. She's just preparing herself in case she needs to um, get out of here or have some sort of a safety line. All right, we're going to put her in there for just a minute. I'll let her sit in there for just a second. Kind of calm down her webs a little bit, let her calm down because she's been moving around a little faster than I would like. So that's about the size they are. Their lifespan, these spiders, they will live. Um, they live for about a year um, and they'll trap flies in their web. They will feed on all sorts of different insects, whatever will get stuck in their web. That's basically what they, what they, excuse me, will feed on. And they can also go for 90 days without eating. So that's, that's important to them in their life cycle. 
So I'm gonna show you guys a picture here of what a male looks like. And so the males are this uh, yellowish brownish color. Sometimes like you can see on that male, he actually has a diamond on the back of his abdomen there on the underside. And uh, they look quite a bit different than the females. The females are all black and then they have that red hourglass, but the males are very rare actually. You don't see them very often. And though some people say they don't bite, they do technically have um, venom. They're not as big of a concern, obviously, as the females are, but they can potentially bite and they do have some venom, although it's nothing anywhere near as much as the, the females, the adult females. So. so a lot of people wonder about the females and why they're called black widows. Well, that name kind of came from a lot of the times in labs they would raise them and then they would kill the males. That does not necessarily always happen. That's that's not the norm. Sometimes that happens, but usually that's happening in a laboratory setting where they are confined and they cannot escape. Um, so that's something important to remember. Let's see if we can get her to come out. Um, the males, they usually want to escape after mating. They actually will try to get away. Sometimes they will even, it's been documented that they will parasitize off of her web um, with black, black widow spider males. They will they'll stay in her web and they will actually feed on some of her stuff. So um, it can go both ways. I, I think we should remember that. And what happens in the lab is often very different from what happens out in the wild. And she's pretty chill right now. She's just kind of chilling up in the corner. I'm gonna see if I can get her to come down onto this stick. Maybe coax her to move a little. We'll see if she wants to. I'll just try and watch her as I'm talking with you guys. We'll see what she wants to do. Right now she's pretty calm and doesn't really want to move around. So I don't really want to make her too agitated at this point, but we'll see what she does. Actually, I'll put her lid on for a second because I'm going to show you guys something. So after the male and the female mate, the female will produce this, which is an egg sac. So if you look right here, there's this tiny little ball. That is the egg sac. I think I can get a better shot now. Now that I'm not worried about the spider, I can probably do more focusing on the video for you guys. There we go. So you guys can see this is the, excuse me, this is the egg sac right here. Let's see if we can get it even closer for you guys. But basically, it's just this silk sack that's filled with, you know, up to about 250 or so babies. And then these will hatch in the spring. And then um, the female can actually store sperm um, for a long time until she's ready to lay the eggs. This female, um, Natasha, I have had her for about, um, about a month now. So she must have been mated before because I haven't had any males in her enclosure. So... Um, definitely something interesting. She must have been storing some, some sperm inside of her. So that was kind of interesting to find out. Okay. All right, we'll put that back. And the reason I separated her from her egg sac, I am going to put her back with it. She can defend it and feel motherly if, the, if a spider can feel such a thing. But the reason I did that is that if she is with an egg sac, they are supposedly much more aggressive. So I wanted to remove her from her egg sac for a full day. I already fed her, you saw she had that mealworm in there that she could eat, but I wanted her to be calm so that she wasn't going to be uh, quite as likely to be biting me. So that was kind of my hope with, uh, with doing that. So, all right, let's see. Oh. All right, so now um, we'll talk a little bit about the spiderlings. So the spiderlings of black widow spiders, so after they're born, so out of this, uh, out of the egg sac here, they are going to um, emerge and they will mostly be cannibalizing each other. So there'll be a yellowish white color when they come out. You know, there could be a couple hundred of them coming out. My wife's really scared about this. She's like, uh, yeah, uh, you're not letting that hatch in the house. And she doesn't want them hatching anywhere because she... She disagrees with me. She thinks they're purely evil. <laughs> but few of them will survive because they'll cannibalize each other. So 
But then what they'll do is this is what they'll look like as they start to get older. Um, they'll start out, uh, you know, that whitish yellow color, and then they'll start to look like this right here. This is a good picture of one. They start to get more and more black and red on them. This is a probably a female that's just about reached uh, maturity. She probably has one more molt, and then she will be fully grown. So, All right, so after those spiders have hatched, um, what they're going to do, those few babies that are able to survive, they're going to perform something called ballooning. So the baby black widow spiders, they are going to basically walk a, a, a short distance away, and then they are going to release silk threads behind them, and then that will allow them to fly. So it's almost like a kite or like a hot air balloon. They release this, this web off of their abdomen, and it will carry them. Sometimes it can carry them as high as two and a half miles into the air, or for you... Uh, metric system folks out there as high as four kilometers into the air that that's how high of altitude they can get and these things can travel for hundreds of miles on on wind currents which is a really interesting dispersal strategy for spiders you know you have just such a very lightweight um, juvenile spider and then that thing can take off and it, it's going to be able to travel a long distance because that's one of the disadvantages with spiders where you know insects um, a large portion of them have wings, which can let them travel very far. So spiders have that limitation and that ballooning can really help push them, you know, push those limits and really help them out. So um, another important thing to talk about is their habitat. So these will live in different places such as uh, cellars and barns, garages, sheds. They'll be in places that are dark, undisturbed, and quiet. They really just don't like to be, you know, out in the open. Um, they, they like to be hidden and away from any potential predators, which is another reason for us to believe, you know, that these are not out to try and get us or to, you know, they're, they're really trying to hide and stay away from things that they have to bite. They don't want to use their venom because it's very precious to them. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. We'll see if she's calmed down a little bit. She seems pretty chill right now. So see, this is kind of her resting position. We'll see if we've got a good uh, zoom here. I'm trying to see where she's at. There we go. Switch over to this camera here. Let's get this right in there. There we go. Give it a second to focus. There we go. So see, she's kind of in this resting position, and they will sometimes even play dead. So she's just kind of trying to rest right now, and I don't even think she'll move. If she does move, I'll have her here so she can walk onto my finger if she wants to. But really, most of the time, she's just sitting still and does not want to move or do much of anything. But anyways, their venom is said to be 15 times as toxic as prairie rattlesnake. So it's pretty powerful venom. But we have to understand that it's a very small amount of venom that they will be injecting. Even if they do decide to inject all of it, it's a very small amount. So they're, they're very cautious about using that. Um, some things to think about, you know, if you are bitten, you could have an allergic reaction. That's why it's important to be very careful um, about handling these things. I would not do it other than the fact that I'm trying to help teach you guys and educate you guys. Um, people rarely die from the bites. It, it's, uh, it's very rare if that's even happened in the United States. I haven't been able to find um, records of people dying other than the fact that they had underlying health conditions or that they were elderly people or young children. And especially, they're very toxic to children under 30 pounds. So those, those definitely young kids, the venom can have a much bigger effect um, on those groups for sure. Another group that they're really toxic to is cats and dogs. So that's an important group to be extra careful. And you want to make sure that you, you know, if you, oh, she's moving around. Here we go, folks. Now maybe you guys will get to actually see her a little bit. I don't know if she just kind of sensed some of my CO2 or what, but she is coming alive. I'll, I'll actually let you guys be able to see her now this time. There you go. I'm trying my best to give you guys a good show, but at the same time, kind of keep her under control. And if I can, I want to try to see if you guys can see. 
the hourglass. It's really a challenge for me to do, but here in a minute, once I've got her under control, so see that fidgety of how I was moving so fast, that made her want to move away quickly. Oh, now we're gonna put her back into the jar if we can get her in there. Here you go, go back in the jar. You guys can kind of see my face and see my reactions as I do this. <laughs> it, it's um, it's a little bit uh, scary for me because I've been reading a lot of stuff on them and I know that it's not that toxic, but it could be a very painful experience. So I'm trying my best to uh, be gentle with her and not get bitten. So, all right. So what happens if you are bitten? How, how's that going to react with your body? So you'll feel, um, you're going to feel when you're bitten. I've never been bitten yet and I hope I never will be. But you'll, you'll get bitten and you'll feel a dull pain. You're not going to feel a ton of pain right off the bat. I mean, your initial symptoms, you're not really going to feel that much. It's going to bite and it's going to leave two, two bite marks on your body. And then within, you know, one to three hours, you're going to feel the max amount of pain. You're going to have a lot of pain. You're going to have cramping, sweating, vomiting. Um, one individual who was talking about his experience, he just could not even sleep through the night. He said the pain was nine out of ten. But this individual was, in my opinion, a little bit uh, dumb because he was specifically wanting to get stung and he was trying to put as much of the venom into him as possible, which in, in my opinion is stupid. So um, pardon my French. <laughs> but usually the pain, if you are bitten, is going to go away within 12 to 24 hours. Um, so that's something to note. So what should you do if you get bitten? The key thing you want to do is you want to keep the specimen. You want to have that specimen so that you can, you know, show it to a doctor so they can have an entomologist or an, um, um, an arachnologist or someone that's studying spiders, um, someone that can identify it and help you out um, to know whether it is a black widow or not. That's important. Um, it's also important to wash your wash the bite with soap and water. Um, you can take a painkiller, put a nice pack on it to try and help out with the pain. And if you're a child, especially under 30 pounds um, or elderly, I know that dogs don't understand me or cats, but if you're a dog or a cat as well, you should probably go see a vet. So, <laughs> so that's important to do. So there was a super interesting study that I read. I'm not going to demonstrate getting bitten, but I want to kind of show you with her if she'll, if she'll cooperate. We'll see. Um, there was a super interesting study that I read, and it was from Loma, I believe it was Loma Linda University. It was in California. And what they did is they, they got 43 female um, black widow spiders, and they tried putting these spiders under different amounts of threat by doing different things to them to annoy them to see what it was that would trigger them to bite. So what does it take to get them to bite? So they had three different levels of threat that they would expose these spiders to. So they would poke them. So just like poking them once uh, for one second, just poking them, either poking their abdomen or their head or their leg, or just, just basically poking them. So what happens if you poke them? This sounds like really interesting scientific experiments. I'm sure the, uh, some of the, you could imagine some cavemen, you know, poking spiders with sticks and doing experiments. Well, there are scientists that get paid to do that. Pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't poking them with sticks. They were poking them with uh, auger gel, so like a gelatin thing that's supposed to simulate human poking. They weren't doing it with their hands uh, quite like I am. <laughs> so they, they poked them, and then they had another one where it was kind of a middle threat where they would poke them basically for 60 seconds. Once every second, just keep poking them. Like, just seems annoying, you know what I mean? And then they also tested pinching their body and pinching their legs. So, you know, taking your fingers, and I'm not going to do it, but, you know, pinching, pinching their legs, pinching their body, pinching it up against these, um, against these, you know, simulated fingers. So they tried all these things to see what, how they would react. So the poking, for the most part, when they poked, almost all the spiders reacted by running away, but there were no bites. That's of just poking them. So the likelihood of getting bitten by these, you know, if you're giving them distance, is probably not a 
it's probably not going to happen. You know what I mean? Of just poking them once. So if your two-year-old gets a hold of him, but we start to move up. And so as you start to poke them repeatedly with that group, they were poking them 60 times and uh, there was a lot of running away. Um, some of them played dead. Um, some of them did silk flicking, which is where they will take the, their back legs and they will basically kind of like flick silk at you. They try to wrap it around your face or just, you know, just a sticky gunk thrown at, you know, a predator or a mouse or something trying to eat them. It, it kind of uh, throws them off. Um, but with this group of poking 60, 60 times, one of them did bite. So the bite was very rare. So I think it was out of um, 40 or so spiders, you know, so a very small amount actually bit when they were poked and prodded a bunch. Then we get to the high threat where you're actually pinching them, you know, with that, they found that uh, the biting was occurring much more frequently. And they found that if you pinched their, their body, so like their abdomen or their head, you know, actually pinching on their significant part of their body, they, they actually released more venom um, than if you just pinch their legs. So pinching their legs isn't as big of a deal. If they lose a leg, they don't care. But this is when the biting is going to occur. So if you ever see one of these, or if you if someone ever thinks about handling spiders, do not pinch them. Do not pick them up. That's why I'm letting her, you know, when I let her come, I'm letting her walk on my hand because there's no pressure. But putting that pressure, that is when you're going to trigger a bite, at least from this research that I was reading. And that seems to make sense. But it's interesting because this suggests to us that they can control the amount of venom that they inject into whatever is bothering them. So they actually, to some degree, are making a decision on how much venom to use. So that's pretty interesting. So to them, it's precious, and they don't want to use that venom unless they absolutely have to because it's very expensive. So we've got her here, and uh, I, I may handle her again for just a few more seconds. We'll see what she does. Right now, she's just pretty chill. I'll try and see if I can get the camera here on her. If you guys have questions, start putting those questions in, and then I will have, um, I'll get some questions um, sent in here to my phone so I can answer those for you guys. But I just wanted to take a second and really just, you know, thank you guys, um, all of my subscribers for, for joining in on this journey before I get into the questions. And uh, thanks to the University of Idaho Extension for helping fund um, my job and being able to continue to make YouTube videos and educate people because what I do, you know, I, I don't put ads on these because this is all about education and it's about you guys teaching you guys. But the University of Idaho, that's their mission is to help teach people, you know, scientific principles so that folks can make, you know, um, good decisions in their lives. And hopefully you guys have learned a lot about insects and gained a greater understanding and appreciation for insects, spiders and other arthropods. I also want to, before I get into the questions, just you know, say that if any of you are interested in studying, you know, insects or spiders or other arthropods, I want to remind you guys that there are opportunities to study these things at the University of Idaho. So, so I want to put in a plug there that if you guys are interested, you can send me an email and I can get you in touch with a recruiter and you have the possibility of working on some of my projects with me, whether that's research or education like these programs that I get to make. So if that is something that interests you, please feel free to send me an email at jasont at uidaho.edu. But with that, I think I will entertain any questions if there are any questions. So either Brian or Karen, if you have some questions, go ahead and uh, send those over to me. Who knows, by this point, maybe everybody's already left. After having held her now, I'm I'm pretty calm now. I think I can hold her again and not be too too worried about it. But I really just want to show you guys that hourglass. So while I'm waiting for those questions to come in, I'm going to actually step on the other side of the camera and see if I can show you guys that hourglass. But it's right there. I'm going to throw on, I'm sorry, thank you guys for staying tuned for so long. I'm going to throw on the macro lens so you guys can see her up really close. There you go. Look at that beauty. There's a better shot. Let's see if we can see through this glass. This is going to be a little bit messy, but. I'm 
might be able to see the hourglass. Too much distortion from the glass. Okay, maybe she'll walk out and we'll be able to get a little better shot. All right, do you have any cicada killers in your collection? Um, I think I do. I don't have any, I don't have my actual collection here at home with me. I, I don't think I have any, but I've seen them and they're really cool. I really like cicada killers. They're pretty cool. Um, let's see here. Where do you find these? Where do you find black widow spiders? You find them in places that are very undisturbed. Um, you know, like a wood pile, a barn, a shed, just places that are not really, you know, quiet, dark, undisturbed places. But they can be, you know, in the United States, they're all over the world, basically. They're obviously not in Antarctica, but um, they're all over the place. Hopefully you guys can see the Oh, there you go. Do you guys see that red? You can just barely see the red on the on the hourglass. I'm hoping you guys are able to see that. Uh, let's see here. What do the what the what do the males look like? The males. Let me show you guys. I'll show you that picture here again in a second. But they're brown. They're much more thin and narrow. They don't have this huge, bulbous, enlarged abdomen like she does. Um, it's much more narrow and small. Um, I don't think they produce quite as much silk. I don't even know if they even really form webs. Um, they don't live as long, that's for sure. I know that for sure. But Okay, let's see here. Um, somebody asked something about, um, for taking the Idaho courses, would a junior in high school be able to take one? It's possible. Um, there are the possibilities of having some online courses. Uh, especially right now with the COVID-19 situation, there may be some online courses available. So even if you're just interested in the next three or four years, let me know and I can try to connect you with some folks that might be able to tell you at least some information. You know, if you don't end up coming to the University of Idaho, I think that's okay. But I think it's awesome that I've been able to inspire a lot of people to, to want to study insects and arthropods um, and bugs. So that's something exciting for me. Isn't the heart located in the abdomen? Um, if their body, if their body is similar to insects, then no, they don't necessarily have. I don't believe they necessarily have a heart. I believe they they pump their blood a different way. Um, I know that. I, I believe they usually have book lungs is how they get their oxygen, but I don't think they are using an actual heart. I think it's more of a some sort of system in their body that spreads the oxygen and the and the nutrients. But I'm sure Brian can answer all these questions. Brian is the man of many facts. I'm just the guy who knows how to make videos and knows enough about insects and spiders and things to get myself in trouble. Okay, she's changing. She's thinking about my thumb. What do you guys think? Ooh, I think you guys can see that hourglass now, maybe a little better. Right there. Hopefully you guys saw it in there. You could see that hourglass a little bit better. She's on the move though, so she's just thinking about what's going on. Her habitat is somewhat shifting, so she's trying to figure out what to do. Let's see if there's any more questions. I'm gonna probably just wrap this up. I'll probably let her come onto my hand one last time and then we will be done. But there's no more questions. I'll definitely keep watching the egg sack to see if it hatches, but For the most part, she doesn't really do much. She just sits still. I'm hoping you guys can see the hourglass. That's what I'm trying to see here, if I can even see it through the camera.
Do I keep ants? Nope. I have ra helped raise ants before, but ants are pretty difficult. I've had a hard time um, raising ants. It's difficult to get a queen. Once you actually have like a, an ongoing colony, they're not too bad, but trying to get a colony going and getting a queen is, is just very difficult. It's a challenge. So ants are very difficult in my opinion. I, I love ants and they're really interesting, but they're just very difficult. She really likes this glass jar. And maybe they don't need that big of an enclosure. I've never really raised them before, but she seems super content in here. She could use a bigger space. And she will get back to her egg sack eventually. But anyways. All right. Any last questions? Can a female brown widow spin an egg sack without putting any eggs in it? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. And honestly, I, I don't know the answer of, of how she is. She has spun an egg sack and she has not been in contact with a male for at least a month and maybe a few days. So I don't know if they can or not. I, what I had read is that many spiders, when they, when they form their egg sack, they are inserting the sperm into there. I, from my understanding, spiders, their fertilization is occurring inside of the female. So I do believe she has already been fertilized. I don't think they can um, lay their egg sac and then the male comes and fertilizes it. The male fertilizes the female who lays the eggs. And I believe the eggs, once they're laid, they've already been fertilized. So. All right, I'm going to handle her one last time. Then I'm going to jump back in front of the camera. And uh, I'm handling her this time for Brian because Brian loves spiders so much. Uh, hoping you guys can see the, the hourglass. That's what I really want you guys to see. It's that cool hourglass pattern. Gotta be careful. I don't want to pinch her legs. I'm not gonna do I don't want to do the pinching, right? Like we just read about. Oh, do you see? <laughs> I pinched her leg. She's like, uh, I don't like getting my legs pinched, and she just cleaned it off. <laughs> funny. There you go. She's looking to get out. She wants to find a new home. Let's get the stick. This will assist. All else fails, poke it with a stick, right? If you drop that, I will bring this house down. She is holding on tight right now. Okay, now that she's in kind of a disrupted state. Get her to come home to the stick. There we go. Maybe. All right, well. I'll take your last questions. I know you guys were wanting me to hold her again, but I'm gonna hop over onto the other camera. And I'll take the last couple questions here, folks. Thank you guys for joining in. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. How many times uh, do they shed? I'm not sure, probably three or four times, I would guess. That's just a guess. Um, Ryan asks me, why isn't Elizabeth stopping you? She's actually standing <laughs> right there. You should see her face. Her face is like. <laughs> I will burn this house down if you let that spider out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys could hear that, but she said she's going to burn the house down if I let the spider out. So anyways, I'm going to wrap this up, guys. I appreciate you guys. Um, uh, for joining in. Oh, one last question. Um, 
from Crab. I don't know if this comes from a crab or Mr. Crab or who, who Crab is, but um, they ask if you've ever been confronted while collecting insects. No, I've never had anybody come to me and say, hey, well, you know, I've never had like a, a fish and game officer or someone like that. I've had people be like wondering what you're doing, you know, and they might be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm collecting insects. I, I research them, stuff like that. Um, so people might ask, and, and when people see me with my insect net, most people are like, okay, this guy's a nerd, he's a geek, he must be doing something with insects or something. So I've never really been confronted by someone saying, hey, you can't be here, don't do that. Obviously, if you are collecting insects or spiders or things, make sure if you're on um, property owned by someone else that you have permission or the proper permits, depending on whether you're doing it in a national park, things like that. There's, there's protocol to follow, so... Um, definitely something important to think about, but I appreciate you guys joining in on this uh, call with me and uh, going through this experience with me. It wasn't as bad as I thought. You know, I didn't think I'd get bitten, but it still is scary to hold it and think about the type of pain that it might end up causing. And if it scares my friend Brian, then it must be really scary because not much scares him. <laughs> But anyways, thank you guys so much for joining in. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and stay tuned next time. Uh, those of you that are staying to this very last second, you guys are my diehard fans. I just want to say that I will continue to produce content, but right now with the COVID-19 situation, it's not going to be as consistent as it has been in the past, and I need to take time for my family. And it may come back to you know, being once every month. But for now, I'm kind of going to just make content at my own pace because I want to make sure that I don't burn out and that I can still take care of my family and deal with the, the issues going on right now with this global pandemic. But I appreciate you guys joining um, with me in on these things and uh, just joining in to learn about insects and spiders and other arthropods. So thank you guys for staying tuned to the very end. And uh, we'll see you next time where big adventures start small. Thanks for watching, guys.